WT slaying. Salama family, Salama, how you doing today? Hope you're blessed and highly favored. I wanted to uh, discuss reparations. Now, there's a reason why my title is Reparation Preparations, and some of you all will understand why I named it that way. And it's because um, I think a lot of us don't understand the times that we live in. Uh, thank you for the gift, Bodesi. We don't understand the time we live in because um, it's obvious when you know you you talk about reparations as if we're just going to get money, as if the money is just going to come to us and then we're going to take it and spend it on ourselves. And so we, you know, we have recommendations from people that we should get investors we should learn how to handle our money all, all of that's good in the normal sense of things right we should buy property we should learn how to invest so that they don't take our money i mean all of that sounds good but understand this how can you take what you call reparations let's say in a financial sense and you go, let's let's assume you go ahead and you buy that property. Let's go ahead and assume you invest in stocks. Let's let's go ahead and assume you invest in bonds. Let's assume you do all the things that Babylon has told you to do. Right? So before I go ahead, before I continue, let, let's look at what we're talking about here and why this topic is important. All right, so U.S. Congress advances slavery reparations bill. The U.S. Congress will take a historic step on April 14th when a congressional committee is to vote on slavery reparations bill. Human Rights Watch said today, the House Ju Judiciary Committee announced on April 9th its up upcoming vote, the Commission to Study and Develop Reparations Proposal for African Americans Act. So... I'm not going to read the rest of it, but apparently, apparently, you know, this is moving forward, right? Now, let's say we get, as I was saying, as everyone is referring to money. And reparations isn't just money. If we get money and we invest in Babylon, What's to stop this from happening again? Tulsa's Black Wall Street flourished as a self-contained hub in the early 1900s. Greenwood Avenue featured luxury shops, restaurants, movie theaters, a library, pool halls, and nightclubs. Before the Tulsa Race Massacre, where the city's black district of Greenwood was attacked by a white mob, resulting in two days of bloodshed and destruction, the area had been considered one of the most affluent African communities in the United States for the early part of the 20th century. The massacre, which began on May 31st, 1921, and left hundreds of black residents dead and thousands of houses destroyed, often overshadows the history of the venerable black enclave itself. Greenwood District, with a population of 10,000 at the time, 
had thrived as the epicenter of African-American business and culture, particularly on bustling Greenwood Avenue, commonly known as Black Wall Street. Founded in 1906, Greenwood was developed on Indian territory, the vast area where Native American tribes had been forced to relocate, which encompasses, encompasses much of modern day Eastern Oklahoma. Some African Americans who had been former slaves of the tribes and subsequently integrated into tribal communities acquired allotted land in Greenwood through the Dawes Act, a U.S. law that gave land to individual Native Americans and many black sharecroppers fleeing racial oppression relocated to the region as well in search of better life post Civil War. So I'm not going to read the rest. You most of y'all should know about Black Wall Street. So the question is, if, if we get money and we invest in land in Babylon, you know for a fact there will be another Black Wall Street. Oh, but we got laws. We have rules now. We have protection. No, we don't. If you can't get justice for black folks who have been killed by police filmed on camera, if you can't get justice for that, what make you think you, you're going to be able to get justice if they come and tear down another Black Wall Street? But here's the thing. The government today is more sophisticated than that. The government today is more sophisticated than that. And the government today has a lot of regulations now. And they have a lot of new laws that they add and, and a lot more taxes. If you think you're going to hold on to any money on in, in Babylon, you're sorely mistaken. You're sorely mistaken. And, and I, I agree with you. Most of us going to be leaving. But guess what? The most high said we will be leaving. And this is why I want to emphasize that no amount of investment in Babylon is going to do you good. Why? Because Babylon hates you. You're not a citizen. The laws does not protect you. Now, let's also add to the fact that Babylon is under judgment. Let's add to the fact that what was there? 53 mass murderers within the last month. 53 mass murderers, murders in the last, last month. Now, let's add to the fact the, the whole change of laws because of the pandemic. So now you have to regulate everything. Who can go where? Who can, who can go to a particular institution? Does your institution meet new guidelines are protecting you from the pandemic? Thank you, Justin, for the gift. So if we were to get these things, what makes you think you're going to be able to hold on to it. Now, understand this. Thank you, Yako, for the gift. Understand this. What many quote unquote churches want today, because as you know, according to you know the, the latest news articles, church membership in the US has fallen below the majority for the first time in nearly a century. That's in the Washington Post. So you got to understand that churches are saying, oh, look, we're going to get reparations. Oh, look, you know what that means? Tithes and offerings. Oh, you know what? We need to make sure we handle the congregation's money so that it doesn't get taken from them again. You know, because, you know, black folks don't know how to handle money. You know, you know, a lot of us don't. I ain't gonna lie. But. But understand that the churches are already looking to spend your money. Thank you, Winona, for the gift. Now, my question is this. If, you, if you're going to tell people to invest in Babylon, understand that Babylon has a ticking time bomb. Babylon is at the end of her existence. So instead of us preparing for reparations, we should what be preparing our hearts. Instead of us preparing to spend money, Babylonian money, we should be repenting. Instead of preparing for Babylon money, we should be making sure we're right with the most high. 
because there's a lot of people that ain't going to make it. I already showed you that video. There's already a lot of people that's not going to make it. Now, I know some of the pastors out there not telling you the whole truth. They're not telling you the dire situation that America is in. Why? Understand that America is under judgment. The land of the north is ready to come and beat her down. The king from the east is about to come and beat her down. While Israel is about to leave. See, that's what you don't understand. Israel is about to leave. Now, granted, everybody don't believe in the second exodus. You know why they don't believe in the second exodus? Because they don't read their Bible. And if they do read their Bible, they read their Bible with the idea of the church. Every scripture is identified and translated and interpreted with the word church. And the letters in that Bible, many of which written to Israel, Yes, some are written to Gentiles, but the majority is written to Israel. Now, if you believe we Israel, you need to read the scriptures dealing with Israel. See, I'm a Bible man. I believe in the word. I'm not going to be swayed by every wind of doctrine. I'm going to read for myself. But see, here's the problem. Many of you sit in church and you want to be spoon fed. You want to continue to be spoon fed. And so you don't get the whole picture. Look, if somebody's feeding you, they might give you a piece of steak, but they're not going to give you them greens. They're not going to give you them, them peas. They might be feeding you and they might want to give you that piece of pie and they may not want to give you the carrots. They might be feeding you, but you're not getting the whole meal. Didn't the second exodus already happen? Show me that in scripture, please. Come on, let, let, let's do that right now. No, it has not. No, it has not. And it would be obvious because if there was a second exodus, the Bible said they will no longer speak of the first one. They still speaking of the first one. So obviously there was no second exodus. I know my word. You're not going to come in here and try to flip it in and mix it up and confuse. No, I know my word. And we're going to talk about some word. The problem I have is this. A lot of people trust churches. But a lot of people should be trusting the most high. Not tail ministries, not any other churches. You should be trusting the most high. He should be your teacher, your instruct, instructor. He will lead you into all truth. So understand, reparations isn't just financial reparations. Reparations means that God is getting payback for everything that has been done to his people. He's going to restore their finances. He's going to judge his, his enemies. He's going to remove his people from being held captives. He's going to release the prisoners that are held captive. Understand that reparations, according to the Bible, is more than money. Now, if it is more than money, you must understand that reparations is part of a bigger plan, right? Well, so when we say reparations, not right now, everybody's thinking cash money is more than money. And understand if, understand if you get money, that money is going to bless God's people to get them out from under the control of their captors. It is to build up the new kingdom. It is to set Israel right and it is to judge her enemy. So, so the Bible says Israel will go into captivity for 400 years. And that that nation whom she served will he judge. And what? 
afterwards they what shall come out with great substance so if reparations is some type of monetary system cash as we see it now then it is tied to israel's exodus coming out with what great substance isaiah 49 listen to me you islands hear this you distant nations before I was born, the Lord called me from my mother's womb. He has spoken my name. He made my mouth like a shepherd's sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me into a polished arrow and concealed me in his quiver. He said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will, what? Display my splendor. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing at all. Yet what is due me is in the Lord's hand and my reward is with my God. And now the Lord says, he who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring what? Jacob back to him and what? Gather Israel to himself. For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord and my God has been my strength, he says. Thank you for the gift, Cam. And my God has been my strength. Thank you, A.M. Stone, for the gift. It is too small a thing for you to be my servant. To what? To what? To restore the tribes of Jacob. And what? To bring back those of Israel I have kept. Remember we talked about that remnant? Israel, the believing remnant. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles. I will make you a light for the Gentiles. Remember that. That my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Now, we know that the light to the Gentiles is Yeshua. We know that. But there's a deeper message here. This is what the Lord says, the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, to him who was despised and abhorred by the nation. To who? To him that was despised and abhorred by the nation, to the servant of rulers, kings will see you and stand up. Princes will see and bow down because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. Okay. Restoration of Israel. This is what the Lord says. In the time of my favor, I will answer you. And in the day of salvation, I will help you. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people to restore the land and to reassign its desolate inheritance to say to the captives come out and to those in darkness be free. Thank you. Righteous one for the gift to say to the captives come out and to those in darkness be free. They will feed beside the roads and find pasture on every barren hill. They will neither hunger nor thirst, nor will the desert heat or the sun beat down on them. He who has compassion on them will guide them and lead them beside springs of water. I will turn all my mountains into roads and my highways will be raised up. See, they will come from afar, from the north, some from the west, some from the region of a swan. Shout for joy. You heavens rejoice. So understand this. Has this happened yet? Have they come from the north? Have they come from the regions of a swan? Shout for joy, you heavens rejoice, you earth. Burst into song, you mountains. For the Lord comforts his people and will have compassion on who? His afflicted ones. He will have compassion on who? His afflicted one. Israel is afflicted. Thank you for the gift, Hebrew. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she was born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hand. See, y'all who reject Yeshua, you telling me Yeshua not Messiah. You telling me he not in the Old Testament. Who that is then? Tell me who that is. I have engraved you on the palms of my hand. Come on, stop being foolish. Thank you for the gift. Yeshua is God. Yeshua is the Messiah. He is the Holy One of Israel. He's the Redeemer. I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. You are like a child. You are his children. 
and he loves you. He did not forget you, just like a mother not going to forget that, babies. Your children hasten back, and those who laid you waste depart from you. What? Your children is hastening back, and those who laid you waste depart from you. Lift up your eyes and look around. All your children gather and come to you. When did that happen? It's never happened. As surely as I live, declares the Lord, you will wear them all as ornaments. You will put them on like a bride. Though you were ruined and made desolate and your land laid waste, now you will be too small for your people. And those who devour you will be far away. Those who have devoured you will be far away. Who are we talking about? Where is Israel? If it's the people in the Middle East, then how are they being devoured? If Israel was scattered to the four corners of the earth and she's being devoured, who are they? But the Negro. The children born during your bereavement will yet say in your hearing, this place is too small for us. Give us more space to live in. Then you will say in your heart, who bore me these? I've bereaved and barren. I was exiled and rejected. Israel was exiled. I was exiled and rejected. Who brought these up? I was left alone. But these, where have they come from? See, this is going to be reparations. Reparations is restoration. Reparation, according to the biblical text, is restoration as a nation. Go read Ezekiel chapter 37. Reparations is tied to restoration. God not going to just give you a monetary gift that you're going to go and give it back to Babylon. He's not going to do that. This is what the sovereign Lord says. See, I will beckon to the nations. I will lift up my banner to the peoples. I will beckon to the nations. I will lift up my banner to the peoples. Now, what's interesting here, take note of that. The Most High says, I will lift up my banner. What's the banner? To the people. Take note of that. He's going to lift up a banner to the people. What is that banner? They will bring your sons in their arms and carry your daughters on their hips. Kings will be your foster fathers and their queens, your nursing mothers. You think the second exodus happened already? Has this happened yet? Has this happened yet? They will bow down before you with their faces to the ground. They will lick the dust at your feet. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Those who hope in me will not be disappointed. Can plunder be taken from warriors or captives be rescued from the fierce? That's the question. Can plunder be taken from warriors or captives be rescued from the fierce? Can the Negro be taken from people who have held them captive, who has a strong military, who's stronger than they are? Can the captives be rescued? If we look at the natural, we're going to say no. But the Most High has stated that he will redeem us. He will save us from afar. He will save us with outstretched arms. But this is what the Lord says. Yes, captives will be taken from warriors and plunder retrieved from the fierce. You want to talk reparations, it's going to be taken from the fierce. You want to talk reparations, the captives have to be let go and the plunder that they took must be retrieved. So yes, captives will be taken from warriors and plunder or money or wealth will be retrieved from the fierce. I will contend with those who contend with you and your children I will save. I will make your oppressors eat their own flesh. They will be drunk on their own blood as with wine. Then all mankind will know that I, the Lord, am your Savior, your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. I know people like the feel-good message, but understand that Israel's oppressors will cease. 
Israel's oppressors will cease. That's part of the reparations or restorations. Reparations is not just money. Re reparations has to do with restoration. Israel will be restored as a nation. Understand, if they're not teaching you this, then why aren't they? Because understand, some people benefit from being a part of Babylon. Some people benefit from being part of the Babylonian system. Some people benefit because they have degrees from the system. Some people benefit because they have political connections with the system. Some people benefit so long as Babylon survives. the helper of Israel. Be silent before me, you islands. Let the nations renew their strength. Let them come forward and speak. Let us meet together at the place of judgment. Who has stirred up one from the east, calling him in righteousness to his service? He hands nations over to him and subdues kings before him. He turns them to dust with his sword. To wind blown chaff with his bow, he pursues them and moves on unscathed by a path his feet have not traveled before. Who has done this and carried it through, calling forth the generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, with the first of them and with the last, I am he. Thank you for the gift, heirs of inheritance. The islands have seen it and fear the ends of the earth tremble. They approach and come forward. They help each other and say to their companions, be strong. The metal work encourages the goldsmith and the one who smooths with the hammer spurs on the one who strikes the anvil. One says of the wedding, it is good. The other nails down the idol so it will not topple. But you, Israel, my servant Jacob, whom I have chosen, you descendants of Abraham, my friend. I took you from the ends of the earth. From its farthest corners, I called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not rejected you. What did, what did Yeshua say? What did, what did the most I said? He said, but you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, you descendants of Abraham, my friend. What did he say? I took you from the ends of the earth. From the ends of the earth. Where was Israel scattered? To the four corners. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not rejected you. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. All who rage against you will surely be ashamed and disgraced. Those who oppose you will be as nothing in Paris. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Why in the world would the Most High give you reparations and you still held captive by your enemies? Why would the Most High give you reparations and you still in the land of your captivity? Why would the Most High give you reparations and your enemy is still next door? When he said, though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Reparations is restoration. Those who wage war against you will be as nothing at all. For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear. I will help you. Do not be afraid, you worm, Jacob, little Israel. Do not fear, for I myself will help you, declares the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. See, I will make you into a threshing sledge, new and sharp, with many teeth. You will thresh the mountains and crush them. We're talking about kingdoms right here. You will thresh the mountains and crush them and reduce the hills to chaff. You will winnow them, the wind will pick them up, and a gale will blow them away. But you will rejoice in the Lord, the glory in the Holy One of Israel. The poor and needy search for water, but there is none. Their tongues are parched with thirst, but I, the Lord, will answer them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will make rivers flow on barren heights and springs within valleys. I will turn the desert into pools of water and the parched ground into springs. 
I will put in the desert the cedar and the acacia, the myrtle, and the olive. I will set junipers in the wasteland, the fir and the cypress together so that people may see and know, may consider and understand that the hand of the Lord has done this, that the Holy One of Israel has created it. Present your case, says the Lord, set forth your argument, says Jacob's king. Tell us, you idols, what is going to happen? Tell us what the former things were so that we may consider them and know their outcome. Or declare to us the things to come. Tell us what the future holds so we may know that you are gods. Do something where the good or bad so that we will be dismayed and filled with fear. But you are less than nothing and your works are utterly worthless. Whoever chooses you is detestable. I have stirred up what? I have stirred up one from the north and he comes. I have stirred up one from the north and he comes. Can I say this in a different way? This is just Jacoba's interpretation. I have stirred up the Russians and he comes. One from the rising sun who calls on my name. Thank you, Keith, for the gift. One from China who calls on my name. One from China who calls on my name, and what does what does he do? He treads on rulers as if they were mortar, as if he were a potter treading the clay, who told of this from the beginning so we could know, or beforehand so we could say he was right. See, the Most High says he declares the end from the beginning. Now, I told you that's a Jacob's interpretation from that. Just based upon what I know of scripture and what I see happening right before my eyes right now, understand that rest that reparations without being restored is futile. No one told of this, no one foretold it, no one heard any words from you. I was the first to tell Zion, look, here they are. I gave to Jerusalem a messenger of good news. I look, but there is no one, no one among the guys to give counsel, no one to give answers when I ask them. See, they are all false. Their deeds amount to nothing. Their images are but wind and confusion. Wind and confusion. Now, understand that with reparations comes restoration. If you're looking at money, then, then then your mind is on the wrong thing. Let's start from up here. We all know these scriptures here. Isaiah chapter 60. Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is, rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the people. But the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters are carried on the hip. I just want to know, family, has the second exodus happened already? Have you seen this at all in history? Has this been written anywhere that you've seen? Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth of the seas will be brought to you to you, the riches of the nations will come. See, reparations coming, not just from Babylon. Reparations is coming from all of the nations that have persecuted and oppressed God's people. Understand that you should not be preparing how you're going to invest this money because reparations without restoration is nothing. Reparations without restoration is nothing. Restoration is what is coming. And it's all part of the same thing. Now, whether the final great substance or wealth or riches of the nations end up being what we see today, who knows? Is it going to be dollars? Is it going to be bitcoins? Is it going to be? I don't know. But the wealth of the nations will come. Understand that restorations will come. Now, we talked about this in my other uh, show where foreigners will what? Rebuild your walls and their kings will serve you. Though in anger I struck you in favor, I will show you compassion. Your gates will always stand open. They will never be shut day or night so that people may bring you the wealth of the nation. See, 
whatever you get from America as reparations is just the beginning. Whatever comes to Israel from America, a.k.a. Babylon, is just the beginning. And as we told you before, that is all part of what they call the 400-year prophecy, although people want to reject the whole idea. But yet it just so happens out of all the centuries and all the years, they're talking about reparations for African people, reparations for the Negro, descendants of slaves, ADOS, all at the end of the 400 years, but they lie to you and tell you it means nothing. They also don't teach most of you that there is such a thing as a second exodus. They don't tell you that. They don't teach you that in churches. Why? Because if they taught you that in churches, you'd be like, well, uh, look like to me the exodus about to happen. Uh, pastor want 10% of my earnings. Now nah, I don't think I'm going to do that. I got to prepare to leave. I got to make sure everything is right. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to make sure I'm right with the most high. I'm going to help people. I'm going to do this. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a threat to the system. Churches, modern churches are part of the system. Thank you, Sean, for the gift. Churches are a part of the system. Thank you, Arthur Peoples, for the gift. Churches are a part of the Babylonian system, which is why they don't teach you the full counsel of God. So let's continue here. I'm not going to make this too long, but you know your code but not short. All right. So it says here, this is Isaiah chapter 11, right? I'll start from the beginning. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness, he will judge the needy. With justice, he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness, the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearning together. And a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. The young will lie down together and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den and the young child will put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth it will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Thank you, my life. Forget. Now, pay close attention to verse 10. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him. I'm going to repeat this. Pay close attention. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him. Who? The nations will rally to him. Who? The root of Jesse. Who's the root of Jesse? Well, that's Yeshua. He's what? He stands as what? A banner for the people. Who? Who stands as a banner for the people? The root of Jesse. So the nations will rally to him and his resting place will be glorious. In that day, the Lord will reach out his hand a second time to do what? A second time to do what? A second time to reclaim the surviving remnant of his people from Assyria, from lower Egypt, from upper Egypt, from Cush, from Elam, from Babylon, from Hamath, and from the islands of the Mediterranean. Had the second exodus happened already? The most I say he's going to do it a second time. When was the first time? When they came out of Egypt. Verse 12, he will raise a banner for the nations. Let's stop right there. 
Family, who's the banner? What's the banner? I just told you. Who's the banner? He said, I will raise a banner for the nations and gather the exiles of Israel. He will assemble the scattered people of who? Judah. He's going to what? Gather the exiles of Israel. And he will what? Assemble the scattered people of Judah. Judah's being assembled. Understand that the banner is the root of Jesse. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand what? As a banner for the people, the nations will rally to him. He will raise a banner for the nations. The root of Jesse is the banner. And he will gather the exiles of Israel. He will assemble the scattered of the people of Judah. Now, the question is, if this is dealing with the second exodus and the return of the Israelites from their captivity worldwide, how would this manifest? The banner. From the four quarters of the earth, Ephraim's jealousy will vanish. Judah's enemies will be destroyed. Judah's enemies will be destroyed. What's the point of reparations and your enemies still control you? What's the point of reparations and you still under their authorities? What's the point of reparations when your enemies still make all the laws to govern you and your children? What's the point of reparations when your people are told about pronouns that they can and cannot use? I'm just asking. From the four quarters of the earth, Ephraim's jealousy will vanish and Judah's enemies will be destroyed. Ephraim will not be jealous of Judah, nor Judah hostile toward Ephraim. They will swoop down on the slopes of Phil Philistia to the west. Together they will plunder the people of the east. They will subdue Edom and Moab and the Ammonites will be subjected to them. Thank you, Dream, for the gift. The Lord will dry up the gulf of the Egyptian sea with a scorching wind. He will sweep his hand. Over the Euphrates River, he will break it up into seven streams so that anyone can cross over in sandals. There will be a highway for the remnant of his people. Who's that remnant? Go watch the show from yesterday. Who's the remnant? Who's the remnant Israelites? There will be a highway for the remnant of his people that is left from Assyria as there was for Israel when what? They came up from Egypt. When they came up from Egypt, what did he say? The second time to reclaim the surviving remnant. The second time. What does the scripture say? No longer will they be called the, uh, the God that led his people out of Egypt, but the God that led his people out of the north and all the places where what? They were scattered. Final verses. See, all of this stuff start tying together. Romans 11, 17 through 21. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, wert grafting in among them, and with them partakers of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Family, 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 family. Before we go on, who's the root? Who's the root? And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them, and with them partakers of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Yes, Yeshua is the root, the root of Jesse. Verse 18, boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Yeshua, who the root of Jesse Bear it thee. He said, Don't boat against boast against who the natural branches. Thou will say then the branches were broken off that I might be grafted. And well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith, be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spare it not the natural branches, take heed, least he also spare thee not. Or not thee. Understand this. Just as we saw in Deuteronomy. When Moses told the Israelites, look, here's the blessings, 
if you obey. Here's the curses if you don't. And of course, Israel didn't obey. The Bible says he knew they wouldn't obey. We know also here that some of the Gentiles who are wild branches grafted in contrary to nature will exalt themselves against the natural branches and therefore some of them may not be spared. Logical conclusion because the warning wouldn't be there unless some of them were doing it. So understand that the root of Jesse, which is the banner, which is the sign that the nations will be drawn to. Why? Because the Bible says that the Gentiles will be drawn to his light. The light is for the Gentiles to be drawn to. And they will be drawn to that light. And we can go all the way back to what we read in Isaiah 60, that the light has come and shined on his people. And they're going to be drawn to his people. And the Gentiles are going to bring them back. This is restoration. So understand, you should not be preparing for what you're going to do with your money. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing to learn how to invest. My point being is we're not going to be here. My point being is you need to make sure that your heart is right with the most high. Yeah, you need to make sure that you live in this word. You need to make sure that you are humble and set apart. You need to make sure that if those bombs drop, that you're not going to be one of them taken out with it. You need to understand that we are living in the times of Israel's deliverance while the nations are being judged. Can you not see the nations being judged? I'm just asking, can you not see that the nations are being judged? How many mass murderers in a month? How many locusts are you going to see? How many hurricanes are you going to see? How many volcanoes are you going to see? Until you realize that the nations are under judgment. While at the same time, the Israelites are awakening, saying, we're the people of God. Our king is coming for us. We are about to be restored. How many times do we have to tell you? How many scriptures do we have to show that this nation is under judgment. So if you're planning on spending money in a nation that's being judged, that's not a good investment. Do you want to spend money in a nation that won't be here in the far do, not too far distant future? Is it a good investment to invest in a nation that is being judged? If you don't think this nation is being judged, then that's another thing. Go ahead. Point being is that reparations isn't just money. It's really restoration, if you're looking at it from the biblical standpoint. And y'all should move out of what you were dealing with three years ago. Because the three years ago lifestyle, the three years ago system is obviously gone. Somebody got to tell you the truth. The the lifestyle you were living three years ago with the freedom to travel and the freedom to do what you want without being tracked, monitored, and probed is gone. And if you think it's coming back, just sit back and wait. I don't see how if you're reading everything and staying up with the data and, and the news items, how you think anything is going back to the way it was. I, I don't know how you can do that. Understand that the motives of these people is to make sure that Israel don't survive. But thank you for the gift, James. No, but understand that the Most High said, I see that they're killing my people, I see that they're being slaughtered. So I'm coming to save them. I can no longer allow them to dwell in Egypt. I don't see how we can see it. Some of us can see it and the rest of y'all don't. Do you love Babylon so much and your position in it that you're willing to give up your inheritance? Do you want to be like Esau and sell your inheritance for, for some, you know, gruel? I'm just asking. 
understand that everybody who even say that they're Israel ain't necessarily Israel. I showed you that. It is the remnant. It's the remnant believers. The Bible says that the wicked will not understand, but the wise will understand. How, how come some of y'all don't understand? The Bible says that in the last days, knowledge will increase. How come some of y'all knowledge ain't increasing? How come when people tell you the truth, you still want to act and live as Babylon? You, you think it's okay to continue as things were. Didn't you get the message? They're already telling you that it's never going back to the way it was. They're already telling you that they're going to control everything you do. I'm just asking. Do you think that reparations is your answer? Because reparations ain't your answer. You need to repent. You need to act like the apostles. You need to go back and do the first work. You need to make sure that your heart is right before the most high. Because as we see, they have other plans. But the most high has already told you. I've read it. It is time for Israel's deliverance. It is not time to be investing in land in Babylon. It's not time to be investing in land in Babylon. It is not time to be investing in land in Babylon. It's not time to be investing in land in Babylon. It's not time to be investing in stock. It's not, and I'm not saying you can't do these things. All I'm saying is that what's coming is going to destroy this system. What's coming is going to set a new paradigm. They already told you there's a great reset. They already told you there's a great reset. And there is a great reset, both for the Gentile nations and for Israel. There is a great reset. But Israel not going to be part of the reset you're a part of. Israel is going to be part of God's reset. Israel is going to be restored. Israel is going back to the land. Israel is going to be blessed, highly favored. And Israel, according to the scriptures, is not going to see their enemies no more. The enemies are going to be far away. Though you look for them, you won't find them. Peace and blessings, Israel. Your captivity is ending. Love you with the love of the Messiah. Make sure your heart is right with the most high. Make sure you live according to his word. Make sure that you seek him and not things. Make sure you are part of his system, his kingdom, and not this one. Peace out, family.